Around the time when I first started touring, and uh, something in me being the most uh, patriotic person you can find, uh, I had decided I was going to be in Iceland forever. And it was a paradise and everything else was evil. Around um, age seven, maybe, I started to becoming just a little bit curious about what the foreigners out there are doing. Coming from Iceland, um, um, you didn't see many bands play live. And I can literally tell you that uh, Led Zeppelin came to Iceland in 72, and then Stranglers came in 77, and then I think Boy George came in 83. So it's every five years we would get one foreign band. That was it. When I started traveling with the Sugar Cubes in 87, 88, I would start going to live shows and was completely disappointed. It was just like sort of sad rock clubs with a lot of beer drinking and bad smell and people playing music with absolutely no hope in it. It was just about repeating the old legendary sort of rock things and things were pretty dull if you ask me. Then I started um, going to clubs instead. <laughs> sort of acid places in England, for, for example. And then rap clubs. And there would be similar experience. Like there would be all those acid house tunes, or rave tunes, or whatever you call them. And there would be one band that always stuck its head and shoulders above the rest. And I'd be like, oh, what song is that? And, and I would ask the DJ, and it would always be the same band, 808 State. And there was this song called Cupic that they did, which uh, was just the most genius of all. And it was um, just so rude and so full of energy and, and optimism. And, and uh, this kind of noise with a guitar that it was just completely abstract how I was dealt with. At the same time, like I said, I was going to rap clubs and, and there'd be all those rap bands and, and, uh, or, or hip hop stuff and it'd be, all be pretty good. And once in a while, there'd be this kind of one thing that stuck its head and shoulders above everything else. And, uh, and it'd be a Rebel Without a Cause with Public Enemy. And it was actually the year, I think, also of the car alarm. So you would kind of, I don't really know if you remember the first couple of years, people had car alarms, they just didn't know how to work them. So at any given point, you would always hear like at least one car alarm. I remember my son, we were going, he was two years old at the time. And we go into big cities for the first time and we try to explain it all to him, what it was all about. and and. Uh, and first time he heard Carl he thought it was an animal. And he kept asking me if I could show him this animal. Because it's sort of the age where kids like, moo for the cow and meh for the sheep and kind of, what does the chicken say or whatever. And, and, and it was like, what animal is that? And, and I kept telling him that it wasn't one and he wouldn't believe me. Because it was just the cities were this place full of car alarm animals. And, yeah, it was pretty exciting times. And that same noise was in Rebel Without a, a Cause. Was it Rebel Without a Pause? I'm probably saying the wrong title. And, um, and then that noise in the guitar in the cubic 808 state song. And I guess that sort of all in a bundle kind of um, helped me to uh, find for music okay. Also, um, the connection between the car alarm and music, that there was something in everyday life that actually became a song. It wasn't this kind of old rock thing where, where um, it had nothing to do with your life, you know? I would like, if I can, put all these things in one bundle. <laughs>